Hi, and welcome to Tuesday's show, falling on the fifth day of April, where some sunshine went a long way to um, breaking up the cold air out there. We have, however, a freeze warning in effect tonight. We've got clear skies and a cold front that's going to give us below freezing temperatures. We've also got some more of the same in your weather forecast. In fact, uh, freeze warning tonight, a, a, another hard freeze possible late Friday night into your Saturday morning, and some light snow looking even more possible late Friday night into your Saturday morning as well. No accumulation, but just enough to remind us, hey, and then one, at least we hope one last hit of winter might, well, or is, just around the corner. A whole lot happening on the news tonight and a couple of announcements in regards to a couple of life-saving organizations and um, both have been around for a long, long time and I'll elaborate in more detail in just a few moments. Also, the numbers are staggering. It's a 40-page indictment. I've gone through nearly all of it. Well, I have gone through all of it perhaps more than once today as it pertains to Eric C. Kahn and, of course, his co-conspirators as well well. $600 million is what uh, he was alleging, or more than alleging, that the federal government pay out to claimants. As a result, he's facing, as well as co-conspirators, an 18-count indictment. They're seeking millions in restitution as well. We'll go through it in just a few moments. Uh, with little else to say about the weather for now, holding off for maybe an improving forecast and in just a few minutes, other news and announcements to follow as well. We'll go ahead and pick it up tonight with news from around the area and start with Eric C. Kahn, a case several years, several lawsuits, and some contend several suicides in the making. An administrative law judge and a psychiatrist and some co-conspirators -conspirator, uncharged have all been named in an 18-count indictment for defrauding the Federal Disability Benefits Program out of millions of dollars. He was charged and arrested yesterday, remains jailed, speaking of con, mind you, and the indictment was unsealed officially earlier today. The unsealed indictment alleges that Floyd County Attorney Eric C. Con, then Administrative Law Judge David Black Doherty, and Dr. Alfred Bradley Adkins and co-conspirators unnamed in the indictment, mind you, conspired from 2004 to 2012, all together with the Pikeville psychologist, Dr. Adkins, and with the Social Security Administration appeals judge David Doherty to commit mail fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy to retaliate against the witness, destruction of evidence, making false statements, and they're also accused of money laundering. The numbers really are staggering, totaling more than 2,000 cases over the course of the years, penalties carrying up to 20 years in prison and a quarter of a million dollar fines for many of the 18 counts on the indictment. The government is also seeking millions and millions of dollars in restitution. Those unnamed co-conspirators who are not facing charges at this time also include two doctors that Khan reportedly used the services of and a former office manager of Khan, who we can only presume at this time are helping supply evidence to the federal government. But the evidence that they have listed indeed is quite shocking, saying that Khan submitted false, and actually together with all of them in concert, submitted false medical documentation to the Social Security Administration that Judge Doherty would seek out Kahn's cases and assign them to himself and solicit Kahn to submit fake medical evidence so Doherty could rule in their favor. The judge getting some $9,000 to $9,500 in cash payments from Kahn on a monthly basis. The federal government also says they paid doctors like Adkins for fake medical evaluations, x-ray reports, and other materials. Doherty reportedly told Kahn to often make clients' debilitations or conditions seem more debilitating and then create more versions to go undetected. And they're alleging that he intended that the Social Security Administration altogether, when they added it all up, disperse more than $600 million to these claimants. They also allege that Khan destroyed records and evidence to try to hide the crimes listed. They're also seeking restitution, millions of dollars in restitution, more than $11.5 million, $5.7 million, $5.1 million, more than $100,000, $600,000, all adding up to about $11.5 million in assets between the three accused. 
So the 18-count indictment carries up to 20 years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine for many of the charges, others carrying 5 to 10 years in prison and similar fines, some upwards of a half million dollars in fines. More than a year ago, a U.S. House subcommittee found that Judge Doherty had approved more than 99% of the disability appeals that came before him from 2005 through 2011 when he retired, and that those cases were responsible for 8,412 people being placed into the disability system with an estimated lifetime cost to the government, taxpayers, at $2.5 billion. As for Kahn and Adkins, they were arraigned in Lexington earlier today. A detention hearing is set for this Thursday, and Kahn has been remanded to federal custody until at least that time, while Dr. At Dr. Adkins has since bonded out. Uh, we're unsure of former Judge Doherty. We are told that he was taken into custody at his home or where he lives out of state, but that is yet to be confirmed. For high-speed internet starting at 15 meg for all of your gaming, movie, home, and business solutions or to watch TV including your favorite local channels without a contract with hundreds of channels and digital and HD quality and to stay connected 24-7 with friends and family, a direct line to 911 or to give your business the link it needs, choose telephone service you know is always there. Just click on their link on this site to find out how affordable the latest technology and communications can be. Foothills Communications. Every year right around this time we do the following report. It's always a bit different, certainly always interesting, and certainly always a necessity. We're almost exactly one month away from the official beginning of the 37th annual 37th annual Magoffa County Rescue Squad Media Auction. And while we're still a month away, they've been well more than a month in the planning stage and still soliciting and asking and hoping for donations to help support their cause. The 37th annual Magoffa County Media Rescue Squad Auction, which will be live from here at the squad building, Station 1. And it will be May the 5th, which is Thursday night, 6.30 to 9, and Friday uh, the 6th will be 6.30 to 9, and then on Sunday, or I'm sorry, Saturday 2 to 7, or when we sell out. And the last couple of years, we've uh, we've pushed and sold out before it's 7 o'clock. So uh, all the items will be listed in uh, Cyber Independent. The uh, live radio, WRLV 106.5, will be carrying it again this year and then Howard's TV cable on channel 15. So uh, we're just getting the word out. So uh, it's nothing new unless you've been out of the uh, county or out of the space or somewhere for the last 30 some years or just now beginning to figure out what we do here. Uh, Rescue Squad's been operating since 1974. So it puts us on in 42 years of providing services to the people of McGoffin County and those who travel through it. All of our rescue services available to them and we roll 20, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days. And if you notice, you know, back to snow, uh, we did a lot of transporting for uh, the nursing home and some uh, employees and other work. So uh, we try to make it the community. We try to keep our community going and safe as much as we can, and hopefully everybody else stays safe. But we're going to start when we be coming by to pick up some items or buy, if you want to make a donation, uh, you know, money's always welcome. And that's what keeps us rolling here for the next year, coming year. So uh, it's 37. We're working on it right now. And they're always working on a very slim budget. But this year, it's a little more slim than most. In 2015, the McGoffin County Rescue Squad made 310 runs. That's nearly one a day. They amassed more than 27,000 man hours invested in all of those response times. Training, 1,608 hours, and that doesn't take into account the first quarter of 2016. Well, we're a little bit short than what we were before. Is it going to, usually we'd have three or four, $5,000 maybe to carry over. Uh, right now, I'd be hard strapped to come up with about $2,000 to pay bills if we could really get it to. So, yeah, we're a little shorter than usual, and uh, that's because of vehicle breakdown, equipment breakdown. It has to be fixed, keep running. 
Uh, we've got a truck right now that's got a bad problem with a main seal in it, and uh, when we get enough money, we'll try to have it fixed. So, you know, these vehicles have to be ready to roll. They can't say it and say, well, one's broke down, that's too bad. Somebody's life might be in danger. Could be that. So we always anticipate we, we prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So we'll be talking about the rescue squad and showing you what is always some really neat and hopefully valuable donations that are made leading up to the big event over the course of the next coming weeks. Next week, however, we're going to be talking to you about another life-saving emergency-related organization. That's the Sagersville Fire Department who will reach a milestone next week, 70 years in service. They were formed in April of 1946. And I sat down with Fire Chief Paul Howard earlier today to kind of go over a little preliminary information. They're putting together some details and we're trying to put together a report and there are just some holes out there in the history. He's trying to identify all the chiefs and gather as much information about the history of the department as possible. Right now, here's what we need. It's a list uh, that I've made. The Fire Chief from around 53 to the late 1960s is unknown, or fire chiefs, I should say. Uh, just a big lack of records, basically, it is really causing a lot of trouble. Uh, they have um, they have some truck pictures from various um, trucks that they've had during the service. The original truck is still on the Belsey Conley property, sitting there. We'll have some photographs of that. But any pictures of any of the men, uh, trucks, historic fires, mind you, the grade school fire, the courthouse fire, the McGough County High School fire back in the 80s that I can recall. Anything of historical nature would be greatly appreciated to add to not just my report, but their event next week. So if you can help us with that and help the Sagersville Fire Department, greatly, greatly appreciated. More on that to come later and more local news to come in just a few moments. Right now, here's your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. Starting off with just a couple of things that I don't have on the calendar. This one from Johnston County. Tommy Mead's Old Time Bluegrass Show is presenting dinner from around the world. It's going to be at WSIP uh, and at the radio station, I do believe, this Thursday from 6 to 8. And they're going to serve until they've served out of food. It's $5 per meal, or you can take a sampler of around the world food for just 10 bucks, and all proceeds go to the St. Jude Children's Research Center. They're going to have Italian, German, Appalachian, and the finger food variety as well, in case none of that strikes your fancy or you just want all of the above. You can get advanced orders by calling 264-1943. You might want to do that because literally they can only serve until the food is gone. But it's a fundraiser that they hope you'll be able to support them with this Thursday, 6 to 8, uh, at our friends over at WSIP. And don't forget, we will be talking more this week, but just to get you geared up and excited, uh, with a coat maybe or a jacket in hand, the Battle of Punch in Half Mountain is this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday specifically for most of the public with the Miss Bell of Appalachian pageant, uh, the Civil War showcase uh, for the dresses for the ladies, uh, either infant all the way to adults. Larry Sparks is performing Saturday at South McGoffin Elementary. We'll be talking to some folks from the Civil War Reenactment Committee very soon this week, but just keep that in mind. It is this weekend. And these are the rest. And I actually I think I just have a birthday announcement for the rest of your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. And I'll pick up that birthday wish and calendar announcements right after these words. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Now on to my birthday announcement for tonight. I've got a bunch of birthdays. Just one tonight, but a bunch for the rest of the week. If you've got one, send it in. Tonight says happy birthday to Austin Bailey, Love Shell, Alicia, Bell, and Wilbur. Happy, happy birthday today to Austin Bailey. Happy, happy birthday to you. And a happy birthday wish going out to my loyal boarders tonight from a host of family and friends. Happy birthday. I've also got another announcement just in that it begins for this Friday, so we wanted to make sure at least mention it briefly tonight. But it, the organization is called MOPS, Mothers of Preschoolers, and they're going to meet the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 o'clock those mornings. If you need a break from the hard work of being a full-time mommy, MOPS is here for you. They offer free child care for preschoolers. For more information, you can find them on Facebook at McGoffin County Mops. Sounds like a story here. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but I'm reading this for the first time together with you. Uh, you can also call Mandy at 
269-4693. It's all I've got for now, but we'll all be finding out more about mops very soon. Turning to funeral service announcements, 85-year-old Thelma Mae Combs Conley of Lick Creek passed away on yesterday's date, preceded in death by her husband, Dorsey. She survived by sons Johnny, Ronald, Greg, and Danny Conley, and daughter Judith Dingus. Visitation is going to be after 6 tomorrow evening, all day Thursday, and up until services Friday at 1, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home with burial afterwards at the Adams Cemetery at Lick Creek. I don't have them on the uh, screen tonight, but just a reminder about services to be held this Thursday at 1 in honor of 76-year-old Swanee Howard of Bloomington and then services to be held tomorrow at 1 in honor of 64-year-old Johnny Manns. Services following the visitation tonight and tomorrow for Mr. Manns will be at the Bethlehem to Calvary Church once again tomorrow at 1 p.m. The McGoffin County Sheriff's Department, specifically Deputy Neil Adams, noted in a police citation as we turn to other headlines that he responded to a call of an incident on Punchin off of Route 7 in McGoffin County yesterday evening sometime around 6.30. He found upon arrival, he said, a pickup truck that was uh, over the embankment and had come to arrest the driver still inside. Upon uh, questioning the driver and speaking to the subject, he noticed that the driver smelled of alcohol uh, and was still inside and unable to take a field sobriety test due to his intoxication. David May, a member of the McGough County Library Board who has been very vocal about the destruction of the Sirensville First Baptist Church and has been in headlines for obviously other reasons now for months, was taken to jail um, by Deputy Adams and charged with operating a motor vehicle under the influence of drugs. May is also a contractor for grant writing for the city of Salyersville. Uh, no comment at this time from the mayor of Sagersville except to say that he is uh, aware of the situation and he is also aware that May was on his own personal time at the time of the incident but that he would be looking into the matter. May was taken to an area hospital and medically cleared before being lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center on the DUI charge. He since has been bonded out as of earlier today. Now to wrap it up tonight with your Looking Valley RECC forecast, the freeze warnings got me all tongue-tied. I'm at 59 right now at 6.30, a decent day out there, out there today, a little chilly at the onset, uh, as will be tomorrow, but warmer as well. 25 degrees for your nighttime low tonight. Those clear skies are also going to add to uh, helping with the freeze warning, and we'll expect to see some frost uh, tomorrow as well. I do believe possible for some folks. Mostly clear skies, that patchy frost before 9 a.m. Uh, we also have increasing clouds tomorrow uh, with a 30% chance of some showers early. We will see an, a thing for showers by tomorrow night at 80%, and that's well, it's not a 100%, but we'll see showers. I can just about guarantee it. Those increasing clouds and showers tomorrow will be part of a 67-degree Thursday with a nighttime low much easier on us at 42 degrees, while Thursday, another cold front uh, that gives us those showers, gives us a cooler day Thursday at 54 and 34 for your respective high and low. Winds out of the west, 7 to maybe 17, 20 mile per hour gusts at times. Another 50% chance of some showers on your Thursday. And this is evidence of what I recall or passed along to you earlier in the week and Friday, a series of cold fronts that's just going to give us a bit of whiplash as far as temperatures are concerned. Uh, Friday, 50, mostly cloudy, 20s for nighttime lows. We do have a 40% chance of rain, even some snow as well on your Friday. Maybe a little snow, uh, quite possible Thursday night, Friday morning, uh, and then maybe even Friday night. As if, if we have any of that lingering precipitation around us, we'll get well below freezing again. Saturday, 45 and partly sunny, a 20% chance. You'll notice I've got just precipitation because uh, any lingering precipitation, well, could very likely be rain or maybe even a little snowfall. Nothing to accumulate, just a reminder that we are going to see one more hit of winter-like weather. Sunday, 59 and 37, mostly sunny. Still a 20% chance of some showers on Sunday. Just can't shake it. The good news is I've got 71 on Monday. For now, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of the show. My day starts early tomorrow, a special ceremony, a balloon release, a special interview at the animal shelter, and that's just going to get me started. So be sure and join us back here for more of your news today. We'll see you then, and have a good night.